On this special edition of Lexington Now, continuing coverage of COVID-19. Welcome to Lexington Now for the week of June 29th, 2020. I'm your host, Neil Noah. The city of Lexington is ramping up the fight against COVID-19 as statewide cases continue to rise. Mobile testing sites were announced in a press event on June 23rd. The city is offering a series of free drive up and walk up COVID-19 neighborhood testing locations. We're responding to a disproportionate increase of cases in the city's Hispanic and African American communities. And so the first stop is in the mobile, in the mobile neighborhood testing program series is at Lexington's Cardinal Valley neighborhood, starting this Thursday at Cardinal Valley Elementary and continuing Saturday at the shelter in Valley Park. Getting people tested is vitally important. With COVID-19, sometimes there are no symptoms or it feels like an allergy attack. Some people continue to infect others because they don't know they have the virus. And the more people who get tested, the better we know what we have to do to slow the increase. So mobile neighborhood testing sites will be much more convenient for our citizens. Dr. Craig Humball and I have been partners in the fight to slow down this pandemic. And we started back in March, which Craig some days feels like five years ago, right? And here we are again today. First of all, let me reiterate that racial and ethnic minorities have been disproportionately and continue to be disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic in Lexington. About half of all of our cumulative cases of COVID-19 in Lexington residents are Hispanic or black. Hispanic cases have risen in the past few weeks here in Lexington about 30% of our current cases that we're calling every day at the health department that we're monitoring are now people of Hispanic origin. So Hispanics are at higher risk of being identified as a case of COVID-19. The average case uh, in the Hispanic population is about 33 years, which is younger than the average across the board in Lexington. And that's really consistent with the younger demographic of this community here in Lexington. Although younger folks are less likely to have severe disease, as the mayor said, they can certainly pass it on unknowingly many times to those who are more vulnerable to complications. Bringing these tests to Cardinal Valley is a joint effort and one that has the potential to help a lot of people. Both Valley Park and Cardinal Valley Elementary School are common gathering places for the families in this area, which is one of the reasons why these locations were chosen. Since the rate of COVID is so high in the Hispanic and Latinx community, the goal is to make this testing as accessible as possible, breaking down normal barrier barriers that would keep people from being tested. I'd like to remind everyone of the severity of this situation. Please come get tested for free. You are not alone and people are available to help you to connect you to the resources and services that you need in case you are sick and have to stay home. We all have an obligation to do our part in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Now that the weather is warm and people are allowed to gather in small groups again, it's easy to forget that we're still living in the middle of a pandemic. People are still getting sick and are still passing away. If we don't take care of ourselves and our families, we put them at risk and those in the workplace at risk as well. Please take a moment to walk or drive up and get tested over the next few days here in Cardinal Valley. You do not need an appointment and whether you have symptoms or not, 
Whether you live right here in the neighborhood or not, you can come and get tested. Uh, there will be Spanish speaking staff on site the whole time uh, so that uh, language access will be more available. Thank you and please spread the word that these tests are for everyone. Some good news was announced this week with more help for those in need through the Catholic Action Center's meal program, including a significant gift to help the center. In the middle of March, I got a phone call one morning from Alyssa, one of the Lundgren girls, that said, how can we help? So we had just acquired a retreat center in Garrett County. We weren't ready to open and we were gonna be opening with Mountain Comprehensive Care, a drug and alcohol facility. It wasn't ready, but it sure as heck was ready enough to get our folks out of here during the pandemic. We didn't know how we were gonna feed them. And then I get a phone call from Alyssa and said, how can we help? Dad wants to be sure you all are okay during this. The Catholic Action Center and, and Jenny hold a very special place in my heart. Uh, my sisters and I were raised to um, be, be give back. We have been so blessed and uh, we have the opportunity to give back to our community and I can tell you during this crisis I have never been more proud of my hometown, my city, my mayor, uh, and the leadership that we have uh, here during this unprecedented time. So what we need to do is think now and get ahead of the curve and how we are going to prepare Jenny for this next wave because it is coming. And we need to be prepared and we as a company are going to stand behind the homeless of this community and making sure that they do not go hungry as a company. We've been very fortunate with our work and our business. The people of Lexington have supported my company and the least we can do is return that favor to those in need when they need it. And let everybody that needs to know that we need your help. Well, there's others out in this community that can help. And they just need to call Jenny. But today, I want to kick this off, the second wave, Jenny, by donating to the Salvation, to the Catholic Action Center, a check in the amount of $50,000 uh, to help you get through this next Wait. Uh, there, there's more than just food. There's more than just food. It takes more than just food to run this place. And I'm so proud, Mayor, that you and Councilman Farmer have stood up and when money was short and you did not think that we were going to be able to fund the homeless, that you all found a way to do it. You're to be commended for that because this is, a, this is a group of people that we seem to forget. And I want to, me and my family want to start the first wave of contributions. So with that, I just want to say thank you to the city of Lexington again for allowing our family and our company to participate in this very big crisis that we had in Lexington. Thank you all so very, very much. You know, the message is pretty simple today, and it's one of great thanks and gratitude. Uh, gratitude to Lundy's Catering and Event Services, uh, Jerry, Alyssa, all the sisters, <laughs> to Chef. You've been in the front line of it, making the food. And um, <clears throat> this is no small deal preparing and providing 102,000 meals. Think about that. Just since March. Yeah. Right? right? It seems like about five years ago, <laughs> but it's really only a few short months ago. And so I also want to thank Jenny. Uh, Jenny, Catholic Action Center, our community really can't survive without you and your wonderful dedication and work to our homeless folks. 
I also want to thank uh, Majors Heather and William Garrett of the Salvation Army and Janice James uh, of the Hope Center. You mentioned both of those, Jerry. Um, they've helped distribute the meals throughout this process. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about what Jerry brought up about the coming wave again of COVID-19. Now more than ever, we need our business community to join Lundy's in helping provide meals. This is our big need right now, is food. And I won't say again to call Jenny Ramsey. Jerry already put that message out, didn't he? <laughs> Your phone's probably already ringing. <laughs> but <clears throat> Jenny said it best when she talked about the goodness of the people in Lexington. We have always been a community that was good at heart that stepped up when there was a need. And we know that, and it is no different right now. People are stepping up when they see a need, and that is what we need more than ever. So thank you all so much. Congratulations to Lundy's for your awesome service and provision of food. And Jenny, thank you. You are a role model for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you all, have a great day. When we return, still serving downtown. Welcome back to Lexington Now. In recent weeks, we've been bringing you a series of stories on how downtown businesses continue to serve. And this week, we begin with a visit to Wilson's Grocery. Our address here at Wilson's is 1010 Kramer Avenue. My partner, Sydney, and I, we've taken over the manager spots. We did this uh, just a few months ago, pretty much as everything was kind of changing rapidly and um, the world <laughs> kind of went nuts for a little bit. Um, so pretty much when everything was going wild, we took over and it's, it's definitely getting thrown to the wolves, so it's fun. <laughs> this store has been here for a while and they've been known kind of for their meat. Um, so we kind of want to continue on that tradition of serving, you know, high quality meat. Um, we have, you know, carry always ribeyes and fillets. Um, we do all in-house ground beef. We, we have a regular and then we have grass fed. We've, started doing ground pork, we make in-house sausage. Um, so meat, meat's really important to us, delivering high quality local meats. We also have just an array of kind of grocery items, things that you, kind of staples that you could need. And, um, we make in-house salads, so like chicken salad, ham salad, potato salad. We try to do as much, you know, in-house stuff as we can. Um, then we have a nice beer selection. So pretty much anything you, you could want, you should be able to get here. We have a company, they, they were making hemp and they kind of switched their, or they were making like CBD oils, so they kind of switched their focus to hand sanitizer for this. So that is even like a local company that we're getting our hand sanitizer from. Um, and we also have masks and things for sale. Our lunch service, um, during COVID, we've been running it from 11 to two. Uh, just that gives us plenty of time to sanitize everything before and after and um, so 11 to 2 uh, we have a we have our own menu of like some kind of the neighborhood favorites of sandwiches that people have created or we've created um, so you can come in and get those or you can come in and build your own sandwich we have pretty much all deli meats and cheeses you can think of and we have a like an outdoor seating area with some picnic tables and some nice um, umbrellas to keep you cool on the hot days. So 
Our days, um, we're open Monday through Sunday, so we're open all week. Um, and our hours kind of differ throughout the week, but Monday through Friday, um, we're open eight to six. Saturday, we're open nine to five. Uh, Sunday, 12 to five. Um, but those hours are subject to change soon with just the, you know, the day lasting longer and just summer hours, so. Yeah, so while we're open, we're still offering uh, pretty much everything uh, full service. The only thing that's really changed is um, we used to do sandwiches all day and now we're just doing it from 11 to 2. So that's really the only thing that's changed. We're, we're allowing customers to come in. We're trying to keep it to, you know, 10, 10 and under. Um, but we do offer uh, if people want to call, call in for like a, a grocery order, um, they're more than welcome to do that. Um, also, for sandwiches and things like that, we're, we're having people call in. I mean, we, we prefer, we, we like seeing customers. So if, if the customer's coming, or if, if they're comfortable coming in here, we'd much rather them come in and, and do their shopping. But we're also fine with, you know, getting an order together and bringing it out to you curbside, if, if that's what you feel more comfortable with. We're not card only, but we would definitely prefer card if possible. And we've even, you know, we used to have like a, a $5, minimum for cards and we've wavered that right now just so people are more willing to pay with card. So I, I think um, shopping local is very important um, for many reasons. It keeps money in the community, um, especially here, you know, we support local farmers and local businesses as much as we can. So when you come here and, and buy local, you're supporting us and also supporting people in your community that you, you, know, you might know. Um, so supporting local is huge, it less impact on the environment. Um, yeah, it just, it creates more culture, uh, creates more community feel. Um, and that's kind of what we're all about here is at Wilson's is creating that community feel and people feel like they know where their products are coming from and, and just feel comfortable. We continued our visits with downtown businesses with a stop at Saab's. Hi, my name is Saab. I'm the owner of Saab's Grill and West African Cuisine. Um, also the owner of South Chill, the ice cream. Our new location is 630 East Main Street. Right now we are open six days a week, Monday to Wednesday, four to nine, nine o'clock, and Thursday to Saturday, four to 10. The only thing we reduce the menu a little bit because uh, we're not fully open. Uh, I mean, we're not fully operating. We're only doing uh, takeout right now, a lot of takeout and uh, delivery uh, using Grubhub and DoorDash. And um, so the menu is, uh, you can look at the salveslex.com and you can see our menu, which is a kind of temporary menu for now. And then hopefully soon we're gonna have the full menu. Our phone number is 859-785. Uh, 1635 people can call or they can go salveslex.com i really prefer people call to order for themselves uh this is nothing against uh, the delivery service but they they charge people so um if if you don't want to order yourself you can order through grubhub or doordash but uh, like i said i prefer honestly uh, people to call our numbers or go on our website and place their order. It is will be okay to order and you know, to come in uh, because this garage door will be open and we sit in, they can order that. But I've, I believe most people call and place the orders before they can. But as you know, we kind of like a quick uh, serving people. So either, honestly, there's no too much waiting time. Yeah, we take credit card. Uh, cash would be preferable, but you know, we that's just American way, so we have to accept the credit card, uh, even though we get charged for that, uh, so percentage. But yeah, card or cash, we take uh, anything. But I think no, no check though. Well, uh, as uh, always, you know, we are uh, very lucky to be in this town, Lexington, where uh, the community is so supportive to local businesses. And I love the fact most local businesses here are, are, own, are locally owned. Therefore, uh, the, the community has been just so supportive, especially the time we are going through right now. Um, we need your help. 
we need any support you can give to us uh, and honestly we appreciate all the support uh, you guys are pouring for for me and other restaurateurs in town um, it's a it's a, just a great community and I'm so so happy that we at least have that sense of you know of people they're honestly just like they, they, they know how to support local businesses and uh, that's something we, we really thank the community for, for the bottom of our heart and uh, please continue and hopefully this pandemic soon will go away but please be careful the reason I didn't open my dining area yet because I want your safety and the safety of my, my staff and myself but uh, this tent here hopefully we're gonna start uh, serving people outside serving and we prefer reservation so we can control the crowd so please call our our number uh, or go to southlex.com and uh, you know make your reservation there thanks for your support and hopefully like i said this whole thing will go back to the new normal whatever that is <laughs> The Kentucky Theater is now reopened to the public, and we chatted with Fred Mills. Well, uh, the Kentucky Theater reopened, or all, for that matter, all theaters uh, in Kentucky uh, could open as of June the 1st. So uh, it's been a couple of weeks now, and uh, it seems with every day or week that attendance is getting better. Uh, I think what once that folks see the uh, safety measures that we're taking that they're more confident in coming to the theater. Um, things are different in that you'll see our employees wearing masks. Uh, we encourage masks as folks enter the theater and exit the theater. Obviously you can't eat popcorn if you have your mask on. But uh, we're very fortunate that both our auditoriums have uh, a large number of seats and uh, at this point, we have we can have 33%, so we don't have any problem with doing the social distancing. Uh, all of our patrons have been very respectful and uh, uh, patient, and uh, so uh, I think uh, with each day uh, that people feel better about coming out. Uh, see a number of our patrons around town and. They say, hey, you know, we're not quite ready to come back yet, but maybe next week we will be. So uh, things seem to be working out fine. Sure, if one purchases a ticket and uh, they don't want concessions, they, there's a door that they can just enter and come straight into the auditorium. And if you want concessions, then uh, just like that you see at many other stores in town, that uh, the six feet distance and it takes a little while to maybe, if we are busy, to uh, get folks waited on. But uh, it's been kind of surprising that uh, how quickly that things have moved. And uh, I think actually maybe concession sales, sales we've noticed may have been up a little bit. We still have our tasty popcorn uh, as well as variety of candies. And if one wants an adult beverage, it's available. Well, Kentucky Theater is Lexington's local independent theater. And it is very important that folks continue to come down. Uh, there's, at this point, you know, there's no new movies or first run films at the moment to show. Uh, so we're, it's kind of a throwback summer, if you will. We're doing a, not only our classic movie that we typically have done for maybe the last 15 years or so, but all of the other movies that we're showing are movies that are from the past. And uh, example, this past weekend we had A League of Their Own and we also had an Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade that we're presently showing. And uh, it gives an opportunity for people to see these films on the big screen. And uh, we appreciate everybody's patronage. Most regular meetings at City Hall are currently suspended until further notice due to the pandemic, but some have been meeting virtually. LexTV is covering several virtual meetings live. Check out our website for the most accurate and up-to-date coverage of city business. 
We're here to keep you up to date on our official COVID-19 response. Simply click on the banner at the top of our homepage. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.com. For all of us at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.